All right. So step one to making a dress is cutting out the pattern. Uh, to learn more about the pattern and why I chose it, you can go see uh, the last video I put up about making this dress. I'll put the little link at the top now. Um, so I decided on this dress, but I'm not going to use all of the pattern pieces for the dress. I'm just going to use some of them. So here we are, all of the, the pieces, and then we have all of the numbers of the pieces. Uh, you can see I circled some of them. We'll zoom in here. So I decided that I'm only going to be using the um, pieces 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, I'm not using 3, 4, 5, 5a, or 6 because that is all about the loopy stuff that's going on at the top, um, which I do not want on my dress uh, to recreate this Dior gown. I'm only going to be using um, those pieces and then I'm going to basically have to draft my own pattern for the overlay, as it's called. I will have to draft my own pattern for. So I'm going to go cut out pieces 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and I will then see you in a bit. So now I've laid out the pattern and what I consider to be the most efficient use of my fabric. And now I'm going to pin the pattern to said fabric in that most efficient way. So now I'm going to cut out my fabric. I'm going to use pinking shears to cut it out, which means it cuts out the fabric with a little bit of a zigzaggy eggs, so it won't fray love my picking shears literally cut out almost everything with them because they just make sure things don't unravel and i hate it with things i create try to unravel so uh i always cut my fabric out with a bit of a like a a nice seam allowance around the pattern pieces because it's way easier to take things in to let them, to let things out because you know it just gives you a little extra room in case you mess up, so I like to have a little room for error, as you might say. So now I have all my pattern pieces cut out and I'm going to pin all my bodice pieces together. So now it's time to sew all my bodice pieces together. I would also like to take the time to note that I did the exact same thing for the lining. I used the same fabric because I had enough of it and I thought, hey, why not? This works. Now would be good as time as any to say that I really don't follow patterns, um, if you can't tell. I just kind of do what I want and use it as a base. One of those things is that I'm using interfacing to stiffen the lining of my bodice because I don't want it to fall down. So I use interfacing to stiffen it. I also am using boning along the seams um, and I'm just doing a running stitch to attach them to the bodice because I it's it's technically a strapless dress. Um, it does have it'll have the overlay over it, but like the dress still needs to be able to support itself. And I was the the 
I looked through the instructions and it called for nothing, and I was very afraid that I would dance and it would fall down, and I didn't want that to happen, so I decided to add boning and interfacing, and then I also didn't want to have to worry about uh, finding a bra that worked with it, so I added uh, boob pads that I got out of an old swimsuit that I don't wear anymore, because I like to save money. So, added all of that boning, added um, the pads there around the chest area, and I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. So, now I'm just going to attach the lining to the outer bodice, and ta-da! Now it's time to pin all of the pieces of the skirt together. It is a nice full skirt, so that means a lot of long seams to sew, but you know, I enjoy it. I love poofy full skirts, so this is this is right up my alley. Now the time has come to do a basting stitch along the top edge of the skirt. I have set my thread as loose as it will go and then I'm going to use that to gather the skirt up into the waistband. Now I'm going to pull that basting thread and it's just going to gather the skirt for me. The bodice has been made, the skirt has been gathered, now it is time to attach them together. Of course, no sewing project is actually complete without a furry feline helper. Look at her! She is so adorable! She's so helpful too. She just sits there and stares at me. So the bus is now attached to the skirt and now it's going to be time to attach the zipper. Which, that was fun. So most of my sewing projects don't need zippers because they're from a time period where zippers weren't invented. But this is 1950s and the zipper was a thing back then, so this dress is getting a zipper. I've maybe installed like one or two zippers ever. I've been taught how to do it. Actually doing it didn't go over so well. I tried like three times and then I ended up hand sewing it, so that was fun. Okay, back to things I can actually do, like cutting the edge out of this beautiful lace. Now for the belt of the dress, I'm actually going to use a real belt and then I'm just going to cover it in fabric, like so.
So now I've gathered my fabric for the overlay. I did it by hand because I don't trust the machine with this nice of fabric. And now I'm going to attach it to my bodice by just attaching it to the lining of my bodice so you don't actually see like the line or the seam. So if you watched my introduction video about this project, I wanted to make a dress that looked like this. I was going to recreate this 1952 Christian Dior gown, but after playing with the overlay fabric, it just wasn't behaving the way I wanted it to with the crossbody sash, and after many, I don't know how long I sit in front of that mirror playing with fabric on my body, but ended up looking more like this which is also a 1952 Christian Dior gown. So, I really didn't lie to you. I did recreate a 1952 Christian Dior gown. It just wasn't the Christian Dior gown I originally set out to. This gown was on my inspiration board, so when I, the fabric wasn't behaving, I just kind of went back and I was like, let's see what else we can do. So, drum roll please. <laughs> 